in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this portal effect really easily inside of Blender. So let's go. Okay, so let's first create a new Blender file. In our new Blender file, we can just safely delete everything. So press A and delete everything with X. Now, first, let's add a new cube to our scene. And let's also add a Bezier circle to our scene, like this. Let's scale up our Bezier circle a little bit and let's rotate it 90 degrees. We want our cube to follow along this path of the circle. So with the cube selected, go to the Objects Constraint panel and select Follow Path. The target of a follow path will be our circle. So as you can see, if we now change this offset value, the cube moves along this path. So we will need to change this offset value. There are two ways that you can do this. The first way would be to add keyframes, but I would not recommend this. The most easiest way to change the value of the offset would be to write down hashtag frame. This way, the offset will be the same as the current frame number, as you can see right here. But this is currently a little bit slow. So let's speed it up a bit by multiplying it by 15, like this. This is already a lot better, but I will just multiply it by 20. Okay, so now we want our cube right here to emit some particles. So let's go to our cube. Let's go and add a new particle system and this particle system will be an emitter. Now, as you can see, if we play our animation, our cube will emit some particles. But currently the particles fall just straight down and we do not want this. We want our particles to get shot in the direction that the cube is moving. And to do this, we will need to go in the velocity panel right here. Let's change everything to zero and let's change the object velocity to something like this. This way, as you can see, our particles will get shot out like this. This is already looking a lot better, but currently our particles are living too long. So let's change the lifetime to something like 20. Let's also change the lifetime randomness to a value of one. So not all particles die at the same time. Like this, there is a little bit of difference between them. But currently there are two little particles. So let's change the number of particles to something like 30,000. Like this. This already looks a lot better. Now let's also add in a new cube because currently our particles are these kinds of halos which will not render well. So let's add a new cube and we will make this cube our particle mesh. So we can rename this cube to particle and with our emitter cube selected, go into the particle settings and under render, let's set render as object and the instance object will be our particle cube. So now you can see that our particle system emits these cubes, but they are very tiny, so we cannot see them. To change this, change the scale right here, and let's also change the scale randomness a little bit, like this. So this already looks a lot better, but we want the particles to have something to interact with, so let's add in a new plane like this. You can place it under our portal, but if we play our simulation right now, you can see that our particles just fly right through the plane. So to make the particles interact with the plane, click on the plane itself. Let's go to the physics properties right here and let's click on collision. Now the particles interact with the plane, but they are bouncing too much off of it. So let's change the dampening and the friction a little bit. Let's give them some randomizers. So now the particles have something to interact with below them. Now let's animate our portal a little bit so that it can open up and close. So let's go to 
the first frame. Let's scale our portal way down and press I and select scale. This will add a keyframe for our scale. Now let's go to frame 15 or something and let's scale the Bezier circle up again and press I for scale again. This way our Bezier circle has been animated to open up a little bit. If it's a little bit too fast for you, you can always play around with the keyframes a little bit like this. Let's also go to the end of our simulation. My simulation will only be 150 frames and let's make our circle close again. So now we have created a really simple portal which opens up and closes. Again. But as you can see, once our portal has closed, it is still emitting particles and we don't want this. So with our particle system selected, let's go to frame end and change the frame in which you want the last particles to be emitted. I want this to be 150 for me. But even though the particles have stopped emitting, you can still clearly see the cube moving. So to not see the cube moving, go into the particle system. Let's scroll down to render. Let's uncheck show emitter. And let's also go to the viewport display and let's also uncheck view emitter. Now that we're at it, we can also click on our particle cube and let's make it not visible in our viewport and our renders. Currently our scene looks pretty good already, but as you can see, there are gaps inside of our portal and we don't want this. So to fix this, we're just going to add another cube to our Bezier curve and make that also a particle emitter. Okay, so what you can do is you can add a new cube to your scene and make it follow the path again and give it another particle system. But that's a little complicated. So what I'm going to do is I will just duplicate the current emitter cube that we have. Let's select our emitter cube and let's press Shift D like this. Now we have two emitter cubes, but both of these cubes have the same particle system. So with our second emitter cube selected, go into the particle system tab and press duplicate the particle system so that each cube has their own particle system. For our second particle system, let's decrease our object velocity a lot. Now, as you can see, our portal looks a lot better already. But if we go to the material view, you can see that we have not given our portal emitter cubes a material yet. So let's do that right now. Let's click on our particle cube, which we have right here. Let's go to the material properties and let's create a new material, which will be our portal glow material. Now let's create a new window. You can also go to the shading tab, but I will create a new window and I will change this to a shader editor like this. Now with our particle cube selected, let's delete the principal BSDF. Let's first add an emission node to the surface of our material output. Let's change the value to something like 10 and now if we would go into the cycles render engine and go into the rendered view, you can see that our particles emit some light. This light is currently white, so let's change it to something like this. And this already looks a lot better. But I want to change the color of the particle over time so that it starts off being really bright and yellow and ends up being a little bit darker red. So to do this, let's first add in a color ramp to our material like this. Let's also add in a math node like this. And let's also add in a particle info node. Let's drag the particle info node H into the top value of our math node. And let's set our math node to divide. And let's change the value of our divide node to something like 50. As you can see, the particles start off being black and turn white. So if we would 
change our color ramp, you can see that it changes when the particle change colors. So we want our black to be something really bright and yellow. And we want our white to be something like dark red, like this. So this is my final material right here. Feel free to just copy it. Okay, so currently this is our portal. But you may have noticed that when you're playing with the timeline, some glitches may occur like this. To fix this, go to one of our emitter cubes, go to the particle system settings, and let's open up the cache tab. And let's press bake all dynamics. This will bake all of the dynamics, so all of the particle systems in the scene. So now you can just freely scroll around and the particles that you see on the, your screen will always be the same. So now you can just add a camera to your scene and let's render an image of our portal. But before we render an image of a portal, go into the view layers properties and let's include the Z and the vector in our render. So now you can just press render, make sure that your render settings are good to go. So let's just render our scene now and once it's done, you can exit the render tab. Now let's click on our compositing tab up here. Now let's also press use notes and let's add a viewer note. If you don't understand the compositing tab yet, you can watch a previous video of mine in which I explain the basics of the compositing tab. But let's add in a vector blur to our render. And let's add the depth to the Z of the vector blur and the speed to the vector. As you can see, this will add motion blur to our scene. If you want more motion blur, you can up the blur amount. And if you want less, you can decrease the blur amount. Just play around with it a little bit and see what works for you best. Also, let's add in a glare node and set it to fog glow to make our portal glow a lot better, like this. I hope that this video was helpful to someone. If you still have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments below and I will try to answer every single one. Good luck with your 3D adventures. Bye.